this last tube. Hello crafty friends. How's everybody doing today? My name is Caroline. Welcome back to my channel. This is a Velocity video all about cross stitch with a little bit of knitting thrown in. I am recording here in London, Ontario, Canada, where I live with my husband, John, our two children, Nicholas and Sarah, and our dog, Luna. I am the owner of Evertote, which is a small online craft-based business where we make project bags for crafters, and we're also the exclusive home of Leo and Roxy Flosco um, overdyed cotton and fabrics. It's been a while since I did a full introduction. So for all, um, for all of my new friends who are here watching today, maybe for the first time, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for coming to visit. And for all of my old friends who have been here with me for a while, I'm glad you're still here. It has been, um, five years. It's been five years that I've been recording videos, which I sort of figured out the other day. Uh, July 2nd, 2017 was when I recorded my very first FlossTube video and put it out into the world, hoping to make a few friends. And it has, uh, it's been pretty fantastic. So thank you. Thanks for joining me. So yeah, um, the reason why I sort of figured that out was because I have a new YouTube channel. I have started a, a secondary YouTube channel for my business, for Evertote. And so uh, you can find the channel. It's called Evertote Notes from the Workshop. I'll leave a YouTube uh, link to the new channel in my drop down box below. The channel can be a little tricky to find because if you just search for Evertote Notes from the Workshop, a lot of videos from this channel will pop up and it's kind of buried, it's hard to find. So um, if you feel like checking out the other channel, I'll leave a link in the drop down box below that you can, that you can, that'll take you right there. So um, I decided to start the second channel because this business has grown quite a lot, especially over the last year. Uh, I moved the business out of my home uh, April 2000 and uh, 21 it was last year, last year in April. And so just over a year that we've been uh, outside the home, I now have, uh, I have, I have, I have people working here with me now, which has also, you know, been amazing. That's been totally brand new. I've worked for myself for my entire adult life. So working with and around other people has been, um, you know, I think it, at first I was a little concerned. I'm quite introverted. I'm an extroverted introvert. I really need that time uh, to sort of decompress. That's why these videos have been so amazing for me. Uh, it's allowed me to sort of put my extroverted self out there yet still um, <laughs> be by myself, <laughs> if that makes sense. So working with people on a daily basis has been uh, something that I never expected would ever happen in my life and here we are and I've been very fortunate I work with some wonderful people wonderful it's a great crew here at Evertote so the business has gotten very busy uh, we, we do a lot of stuff now we've got a lot of moving uh, pieces with retreats and the floss and linen from Leo and Roxy Floss Co, as well as all of the project bags that we make. We do collaborations with designers. Um, we put out kits. We've, we're doing a holiday countdown, uh, sort of advent style for the, for the holidays. There's a lot going on. And so instead of all of that kind of landing on this channel, I decided to separate out the two so that all of that stuff is now going to be moved over to its own dedicated channel and you're going to stop seeing that here. I'm not going to be doing uh, workshop videos on this channel anymore. These, these past this conversation that we're having right now um, and obviously the projects that I'm working on, which are usually things that I do sell in my shop, I won't be talking about, um, you know, there won't be sort of that sort of more sales aspect that I've, that I've been putting on this channel up until now. Um, so to that end, if you are interested in any more information on the retreats that I've been talking about in the past, I mean, I might mention that I've put up a video, you know, 
like yesterday I put up a video about the retreats that I'm hosting next year where Jacob of Modern Folk Embroidery is coming to Canada. Um, so things like that, all of those informational videos are going to be put up on that channel. They are going to be short for me. They're going to be short videos. They're going to be frequent videos. So that's a little, you know, kind of word to the wise before you, so you know what you're getting yourself into. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep each video topic specific. So it's not going to be a huge video of everything that we're doing in the shop. So for example, this afternoon I have two different, well three, including this one, I've got two videos planned. Um, I'm recording a video that's just showing the new Ada that we're bringing into the shop. And then I'm going to do another video, sort of a floss toss video where I show um, flosses that will look amazing pairing with the linen and possible chart suggestions and things like that. So, and the Jacob video is separate and the linen video is separate. So if you're not interested in linen or you're not interested in Ada or you're not interested in any of the retreat information, you can totally skip those videos and you can, you can sort of hone in on maybe only the information that you are interested in. I'm trying, I'm trying to work with myself and my own tendencies here, which is to uh, be quite chatty. I'm, I am quite chatty and I will frequently use uh, 100 words when maybe 10 words would suffice. It's, it's a personal quirk. I've learned to live with myself and uh, <sighs> there you have it. So I'm trying very hard and I think that way at least I might still be a little bit chatty, but at least it will only about it will only be about one thing and you can choose to skip it if you have zero interest. So Evertote notes from the workshop, brand new channel on YouTube. I really hope that you'll join me over there. Um, there will be, uh, there will be some giveaways over there. And if it'll be clear, if I do a short little video, I've got some things around the workshop that, you know, um, for example, I do, I have a chart. I've got a modern folk embroidery chart and it got a little creased in the box. So I wouldn't sell, I wouldn't send this out to a customer, but it's a perfectly good chart um, with a beautiful pattern. So I'm going to be offering this up for giveaway on the channel. Now that's the other thing, being that they're sort of short individual videos, that's going to allow me the opportunity to delete videos that are no longer relevant. So once the giveaway is over, I'll just delete that short little video and then it won't be cluttering up the channel. So I know this was a whole lot of information about something totally different, but I promise you moving forward, I won't be discussing this again. So hopefully that channel will sort of take on a life of its own and we'll go from there. So, okay. I had a giveaway the last video that I did. I had a bag set giveaway. Um, here it is. So this was a bag set. One of the most recent ones that we put out here at Evertote, it's a coffee fabric. And so the bag set was the dark roast blend as it were. So this was the bag that was um, up for giveaway and I was putting it together with this amazing, why did we go so dark there? There we go. How Doth the Bee, How Doth the Little Busy Bee by Jacob of Modern Folk Embroidery. And I have to tell you, because I couldn't send it without some floss. So the winner is also actually receiving two skeins of Leo and Roxy Floss Co. in the Tournesol colorway. Tournesol was the floss that we used to stitch. Um, Leah, Leah, who works here at Evertote, Leah stitched the model. So if you're looking at this on the website and you see the model that was stitched, she did a beautiful job. And that was the floss that we used. And it's a beautiful yellow color. So I'm including that in the giveaway, in the giveaway prize for the winner. Do you want to know who the winner was? I know you do. So I had 277 comments. Uh, I use the random YouTube comment generator picker thingy. So it does all of the work for me here. So there were 277 unique comments. I was looking for the word coffee and it chose Tanya Bertoli, 
Ber Bertuola. I, I apologize, Bertuola. I'm probably not even close. Tanya, I am going to put in a screenshot right here of your winning comment. So if your name is Tanya and your last name is remotely close to Bertuola, you're the winner. Congratulations. Please email me, caroline at evertote.ca and uh, we'll get that out in the mail to you. It's all ready to go, so chances are it will leave early next week if you get in touch with me soon. So, hooray, congratulations, Tanya. That was, uh, that was a really fun one to put together, and I think you're gonna love it. Okay, so I, I have another giveaway for this week. <laughs> you guys are gonna oh this is really fun actually I t I'll tell I'm gonna be honest with you I only just thought of this giveaway literally like half an hour ago when I was preparing to record to to have a visit with you um, because I had something else picked out something small to, to, to put up for giveaway today but then I was getting ready and my birthday is this week and I thought I'm gonna give myself a present I am gonna give myself a present by giving away something to you so think back a couple of weeks to when I shared a project called how does your garden grow <laughs> Have you clued in yet where I'm going with this? I think I think you're smelling what I'm cooking because um, yeah. Okay, Papillon Creations. How does your garden grow? I did my homework. So last time, last time I shared it, I was on part six. I was starting just starting part six. Part six is four corners. It's these four corners here. Uh, a, A, B, C, and D. And I said I was going to complete one of those corners. And I did. So, achievement unlocked. There it is. Look. See? So, ring a bell. I did it. I completed what I said I was going to do. I did not enjoy it. It's not that I didn't enjoy it. That, that's not the right way to say it because the stitches are beautiful. The project is beautiful. Like this is one of those things where I would be super happy with the finished project. I would, I would love to have the finished project. I don't enjoy working on this. I just don't. I am a process stitcher. I am not a project stitcher. Clearly evidence is mounting over the past five years that I'm a process stitcher. I love starting new things. I love, you know, dreaming up new combinations. I love the sound of the floss pulling through the thread. All of those things are really what brings me tremendous amounts of pleasure. And for me, that's what this is all about. It's it's all about creating happiness for myself and pleasure for myself and, you know, relaxation and right? It's not supposed to be it's not supposed to be a chore. This felt like a chore. And it felt like, oh, this is why this project has sat for so long. And, but it's so pretty, you know, it's so pretty. Just do another one, just do another one. And I, you know, so you know what guys, I'm gonna send it out into the world because this project deserves someone to love it. This project deserves someone to finish it who is going to absolutely love it. And I know that whoever, whoever receives this is going to, treasure it. Now, before, before you enter this giveaway, I should just tell you a couple of things in the interest of honesty. Okay. First of all, the chart that you're getting, this was a freebie stitch along. Okay. So this was a 12 part stitch along that was put out by Papillon Creations back in 2008. It's no longer available. However, ooh, uh, Nuri, Shaded Stitchery, Nuri left me a message. Nuri left me a comment last week and she said, she remembered the last time I showed this like a couple of years ago. Um, 2020, Nuri, I think, I think Nuri said early 2020 when I, when I shared this for the first time 
well that she remembered I've, I've shown it before a few years before that however Nuri reached out to the designer and uh, and now I can't remember the designer's first name it is it's gone it's gone Papillon Creations that's how you spell the name of her business so now Please, unless you're serious about this, I'm sure that this designer doesn't want 300 people messaging her saying, hey, can you send me that chart? Please don't do that. Um, only if you are like dead serious, I have to have it, have to have it, have to have it, then, you know, maybe. Nuri emailed her and said, I would, real, I, Nuri offered to pay for it. So that might, that might, you know, help your cause a little bit if she's being inundated by emails. If you offer maybe to pay for it, maybe she'll release it as a, as a paid pattern. That might be a better way to go. So I have all 12 parts printed out. Okay. So, and they have been hanging around for a while. So, and they were printed out on leftover paper I had hanging around. So you're getting it on the back of a music score and you know, random flotsam and jetsam that I had hanging around that's what you're getting the chart on okay so it's not a pristine chart it's definitely legible the chart pattern and I've got all 12 parts are here um, including I mean I have completed to part five you'll have to go back in and do the beads I don't have any beads so you'll need beads which brings me to the next thing that you must know about this before you put your name in for the giveaway I am not a hundred percent positive that I will have enough floss so I'm going to send you everything that I have. This is the floss that I have left. I'm a little concerned that purple, these are all gentle arts flosses and they're old. So dye lots, forget about it. Purple iris, I'm a little concerned purple iris might run short. So if you're a very, very, very frugal, st I am, I'm a really, f I, uh, I will use that floss right down to the last centimeter. So if you're a really frugal stitcher, um, most of the colors should be totally fine, but there's one or two in here that I'm a little, I'm a little nervous that they might run a little short. So knowing that and knowing that you're getting a chart on the back of my, <laughs> my past life, I am offering this up for giveaway. And I, I just know the right person is out there for it. I have a feeling I'm going to get more than one request. So if you are interested in me sending this to you, please leave me a comment below that includes the word um, garden. Just has to have the word garden in it. And next week when I record again, I will look specifically for the word garden in your comment and I'll choose um, the person who, who I'll send this to uh, from that, okay? So it's a very special piece. It's a very special piece and frankly I want I really want someone to finish this so please only put your name down if you're actually really gonna stitch it I did this a number of years ago with a stocking I had a just Nan stocking that um, that I started it was it was literally it had been hanging around since Sarah was a baby Sarah is now 21 years old and it was beautiful it was beautiful but I just couldn't it was very similar it was very similar it had some had a few specialty stitches in it in the bottom and it had beads and it was just not and I knew I would never finish it into a stocking that it would probably just hang around and I wanted somebody to love it well Colette a woman named Colette um, I ended up sending it to her and she finished it and she sent me photos of the um, special girl in her life that she had given it to I don't think it was her granddaughter, but it was somebody, it was another really special person in her life and she gave it to them as a gift and it just made me feel so good. You know, it made me feel so good that this project that I loved, but I knew I wasn't going to enjoy the process, that somebody else was going to love it. And so I'm hoping I can find somebody to love this. So please adopt my whip. That is what I'm giving myself for my birthday. That's my present. I'm giving up a whip. So I'm not having a stitch along. I'm not, I, I am not starting it. I, I started something new last weekend. So I'm not having a new start on my birthday. I've already started something new. I'm going to give away one of my whips. That's what I'm doing. So how did your garden grow? Needs a new home. Help me find it a new home. 
so and then and then I will feel I will feel really good so thanks okay Whew. so let's see what we're where we're at here oh uh, I need to update you on my progress on the other pieces other than how does your garden grow that I have been focusing on first up is Amtrak so I'm just gonna I uh, it was pouring with rain this morning and I had to I had to I had to pack lightly because I knew it would be everything would just get soaking wet so here's a photo. Um, excuse me here's a photo of where Amtrak was the last time I shared it with you I have been focusing on the bottom left corner and here's a photo of the little bit that I accomplished in the last two weeks so progress is progress this is a massive project um, it is it is uh, it's a so okay excuse me so yes the title of it is Amtrak just like the train but it's not based on the train it's based on something else and I don't have the chart here to tell you the designer's story but it's not the train um, the designer is Sampler Cove uh, I think you can still find Sampler Cove charts from CelticHobbies.com www.CelticHobbies.com I believe and I'm stitching it on a piece of 25 count even weave, one strand of floss over one, so it's very small. And I'm using a silk floss by Vicki Clayton. Very, this is, a, this is a really old project, so it's like 2008, 2009 uh, vintage. And the floss colors from Vicki were called OMG Red, Steelies, and Night Smoke. All of my project details are in the drop down box below in case you are interested in these projects for yourself. So the title and the designer and the, to the best of my knowledge, the supplies that I used or am using. So that's Amtrak. Uh, the, next, the next bit of stitching progress um, for things that I did not bring is my stitch along that I am hosting um, for Birds from Bernard's Books, which is a charity stitch along um, posted by Jacob of Modern Folk Embroidery with 50% of the chart proceeds being donated to my husband John's fundraising efforts towards the New York City Marathon. And the charity that we are supporting is the Brain Aneurysm Foundation of the United States. So we, um, we just wrapped up our second Instagram auction on Saturday, which was this was this was a really lovely a lovely one actually. Um, my friend Josh Mole, who is a knitwear designer in the Netherlands, um, designed a shawl for me. It's named the Caroline shawl, and what's funny is I don't ever remember to say this. So you can't find that chart in my shop. You can find the Caroline shawl in Josh's Ravelry shop. I will remember to put a link because um, I can tell on my search history what people are kind of looking for in the shop and more than a few of you have been looking for the Caroline shawl in, uh, in, my, in my online shop. It's not there. Uh, it is in Josh, Josh's shop. So if you're interested, I am knitting it. I'm knitting the Caroline shawl and Josh has actually knit me one and it's beautiful so I'll put a link to the to the pattern so that you if you're interested you can you can find it so the Instagram auction Josh offered to knit a Caroline shawl and we auctioned that off and my friend Virtuti who lives here in London with me we've been friends since the time that my children were teeny tiny and uh, Virtuti was the winning was the winning bid and so my friend Josh is going to knit my friend Virtuti a Caroline shawl so what I said to Virtuti was when you receive your shawl I'll wear mine and you can wear yours and we'll take a picture of ourselves together and uh, and we'll share that with Josh so pretty special so that was great. I don't have an Insta there won't be an Instagram auction this week, uh, but there will be one next 
Friday. I received a package of charts in the mail from a viewer named Anne. Um, Anne and I had been conversing back and forth and she asked if she could participate in contributing to uh, the Instagram auctions. And so I received a huge packet of lovely, lovely things to, to auction off. So look for that next Friday. I'll have more information in next week's video. Okay, um, did I show you my, no, I didn't, did I? Okay, we're gonna circle back around. Birds from Bernard's Books is the stitch along, which I am hosting, but I am the worst stitch along host ever. Now, there's gonna be a holiday stitch along this year for the advent. I have to keep up with that because it's a daily stitch along and I'm like doing daily videos for it. So it'd be very, very bad form if I did not keep up with that one. So that one I will be keeping up with. This one, I am I am stitching it. I really wanna finish it by November. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but that's okay. I'm putting in, every once in a while, I put it in, put the stitches in. I'm gonna be working on it a lot this weekend, I think. I think I have to see um I know I'm, I'm going away for a couple of days for my birthday so and it's 40 count and it's on a frame and so it's not easy to pack you know what I mean there's always these reasons it's such a beautiful pattern I've seen more than a couple of finishes on Instagram it's a gorgeous gorgeous chart anyways here blah 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 here's where I was and here's the teeny tiny bit of progress that I made and you can see, I think I put in four lengths of floss and that was about it. So I've got a ways to go. It's a beautiful chart though, so I need to get back to it. Oh, I gotta change my battery. Okay, uh, Sarah's blanket. Honesty check, I worked on it. I worked on it, did not bring it because it's, it's big. I can only knit on it in bed now, so actually <laughs> it stays on my bed. All the time I've been trying to knit a row at night and then a row in the morning when I get up so uh, I I took a photo I'll insert my photo here over top of me talking where you can see the larger um, progress keeper the one with the little coffee cup on it all of those progress keepers were made by a, a friend in Australia her name is Carrie and she is the creative curator uh, and that's creative and curator, both with K's. She's in Australia. She is amazing. She does amazing sort of chain mail work. She does scissor fobs and zipper pulls and all kinds of really beautiful jewelry. Um, her Etsy shop is sometimes, sometimes she only has a couple of things, sometimes she has more than others because this is just a side thing for her. Um, she has a full-time museum job. She's a, she's a curator. Uh, but her work is gorgeous, like really beautiful. They, the progress keepers that she made are all in that blanket. I've been using them for years. They are some of my favorites. They're just, they're beautiful. They're like little jewels on your knitting. Um, really, really nice, really nice. So I should check in with her and see what's in her Etsy shop at the moment. Um, been a while since I, since I said hello to Carrie. So I should. I think I still have some scissor fobs. See, this is how the brain works. Thinking over time. Okay, back to the blanket. Yeah, I've put in a couple of inches since last week. The pattern is called the Talon Throw, T-A-L-O-N, by Brooklyn Tweed. And it is, it is a gorgeous pattern. I mean, it's really a fun knit. I've mentioned this before. It has a ton of cabling in it like a, a metric ton of cabling. Uh, my friend Dawn, Codependent Knitters in Sarnia, Dawn taught me how to cable without a cable needle, which I really should do. I should do up a little tutorial video for you. If, you. if you've never tried it before, it's genius and it really helps speed up the process. You don't have to hunt around for your cable needle. You just, you know, go for it. And it's really, really a great trick. It's not really a trick, it's just a way to do it without a cable needle, but it's very effective. And it's made knitting that blanket very enjoyable because you don't have to really, you know, there's not a lot of effort into the cabling part of it. It's fun. So that's my progress on Sarah's blanket. It is continuing apace. I am going to 
She's not convocating until October of next year. So she said I could take until then, even though she'll be done school in April. She's allowing me a few extra months grace because she's technically not convocating until October. So I'll take it. All right, so those are, the, those are the projects that I left at home that I had to take pictures of for you today. All of the other things that I have to share with you today, I have here with me. So first up, Counted Canvas. All right, Counted Canvas. Oh, I've been looking forward to sharing this. Now, a couple of weeks ago, the last time I recorded, I said that I would talk a little bit about Counted Canvas work in my next video. I've already done that though in another video and I thought why reinvent the wheel because I already I knew this video was already going to be long enough so what I did this morning was I found that video I've rewatched it um, <laughs> that was weird that was really weird and it's one of the reasons why I love doing this because it's like you're listening to past you saying things that oh yeah you know because it's you speaking to yourself but from a few years ago, it's very, it's, it's a kind of a weird feeling. But anyways, um, I've already done a video that sort of goes through the whole process of counted canvas, explaining the materials and all of that kind of stuff. And so instead of me telling you all about it again today, I am going to put a link to that video in the drop down box below. It's, it'll be very clearly labeled. So counted canvas. And the project that actually that I was working on in that video, I had only done the inside square and I have since finished that project. So this is the project that I was working on in that video a few years back. And so you're going to see me talking all about the, um, this inner square here and all of the materials that went into this project. And so now that you know that, and you're seeing this video today, you'll see, hey, <laughs> Caroline does actually sometimes finish things. So here's the proof is in the pudding. It is now completed, but as you can see, it's still not framed. It's still in, in my, uh, my stretcher bars. Now that's another really funny thing. And maybe you didn't notice that I just did it, but I noticed it because of, let me show you this. So this is a mug that was made for me. And it says, hello crafty friends. As you can see, and I, I don't know if you just heard me say, as you can see, it's still in its stretcher bars. As you can see, and this is actually, this is the outline this is the border of a project that i worked on for a few years called savon and so um john valentine and charlie waters john valentine is the potter and his partner charlie is the artist and they made this for me and so it says as you can see and it's a little word bubble because there's me <laughs> isn't that hilarious and then off the grid needle arts. So as you can see, I still use my mug. And I, uh, this is my favorite herbal tea mug. Mm. Because it just keeps it, it never goes cold, cold. It just keeps it kind of at the, I like herbal tea when it's kind of room temperature. So it's perfect for that. So anyways, that's uh, as you can see. And the reason why I bring that up is because when I was watching this video that I did so many years ago, just like now I say Ellen, Jacob, Ellen, Jacob, Ellen, Jacob, as you can see, as you can see, as you, I must have said it a hundred, 200 times. Okay. Maybe not 200 times, but now that I've mentioned it, you're going to notice it. And it's going to be like, what were you thinking? <laughs> Come up with a different phrase already. But anyways, maybe it'll make you laugh because I'm laughing at myself now. It was so ridiculous. But anyways, this was the project. It's called, uh, oh, good gravy. What's it called? Winter stars. I can't remember. I can't remember. Um, but that video talks all about it. It gives the, it's uh, from Nancy's needle is the designer. I think it's called winter stars. 
or starry, starry, I can't, I can't remember. Anyways, beautiful chart, not difficult at all. Okay, so counted canvas, that's what this is called. Let me bring it up close. Isn't it pretty? Yeah, it's gorgeous. So, that brings me to the canvas work that I shared last week that was in my, my bag that I'd made. The tapestry piece that's there, I, I mentioned my friend Dawn had found some pieces at a, a thrift store and one of them was a piece that I'd salvaged into a, a project bag. And inside that project bag was a canvas work piece that I had been um, working on for a while. So it's called Seasons by Amy Bear, Amy Bear Needlepoints. And this chart was sent to me um, from a viewer named Laura a number of years ago. And actually after she sent it to me, uh, I went to my local needleworks shop at the time, which was Thread and I here in London. They have since retired. Um, and I kitted it up. And I shared where what I had done last week. And I've put some progress into it since the last time I shared it with you. I could not, I could not, I had to make myself put it down because it is so fun. Are you ready? See? I did a lot, didn't I? Before, I only had, I still, I had to finish this triangle up here and then I did all the fill-in. It basically looked like a pinwheel last week and I did all of the fill-in to make it look like a diamond. So I'm now working on the upright cross stitches that are the border surrounding. So I've only got half of the border done. So that still needs to be completed. And then the corner, the corners need to be filled in of the first square. I'll show you the chart in just a sec. So look at that. Told you I would do some. Yeah, I really, I really had a hard time putting it down. It's so fun. So there's the middle square right there. So you can see what I have left to do on that square. Just so fun. Okay, so those are my two counted canvas pieces. Let's see. Let's see if we can get a screenshot for the video here, okay? So we'll hold these up side by side and we'll give a cheesy smile like that. <laughs> Screenshots are always so fun. You know, because if you try to pick out a screenshot from your video for the for the screen capture that's going to be at the face of your video for the next five years and you're scrolling through the video, scrolling, 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 and your mouth is open the whole time, it's really hard to find a flattering photo to put on the screen cap. So just a little insider scoop there. Those photos that are at the beginning are really hard <laughs> to find something where my mouth isn't going. Something like that. So let's hope that's not the screen cap right there. So ta-da. Yeah. Oh, it's so fun. It's so pretty. Okay. Counted canvas. Okay, next up oh um Isabella's heart no I'm gonna I'm gonna show you Isabella's heart oh what the heck I'm talking about it now I worked on this a lot it was so fun so there's where I'm at so I made some great progress on the second bird and I've I've counted my my border correctly. So now I'm ready. The the border is very simple. It's really pleasurable stitching because it's, you know, it's it's uh, really straightforward and simple stitching. And so if you're chatting with a friend or visiting with your family at dinner time and you're sitting having coffee, can you tell when is my favorite time to stitch? So you can just pick up your thread your needle and and go. You don't have to count or anything like that. I love that kind of stitching. I love this chart three colors and it's beautiful it's so pretty so the fan is now completely done isn't it gorgeous that bird the bird's almost done 
He needs some legs. Yeah, heart at the top. It's so pretty. So this is a 28 count Leo and Roxy Flosco linen in the colorway Blank Slate. And the three floss colors are Fallow Red, Flamingo, and Antique Wedding Dress. That's it, three colors. I am really loving, loving this project. Really, it's uh, bringing me some joy. Very, very pleased with it. So I think I'll, I'll probably have a finish on that. I, I wouldn't think it should take me too much longer because a lot of the stitching was really in the bird and the fan. The rest of it, it's not, the color's gone really dark in here. The, the lighting in this room is not good. So it's, it's on my list to have a better lighting set up soon. It's just, you know, add it to the list. Things that cost money, things that take time, add it to the list. It's like a honey-do list, except, you know, everything else is on the list all at the same time. Anyway, so that was Isabella's Heart. That is a chart by Modern Folk Embroidery. The next one I want to show you is another chart by Modern Folk Embroidery called Halsingland Blummer. Here's the design. I love, love, love these styles of designs. They are my favorite. They're my favorite, without a doubt. I mean, I love all stitching. Okay, I think I made it clear today that specialty stitches maybe aren't really my favorite, but I love all stitching, but this is my favorite. This monochromatic, geometric, I love it. I just love it. Yeah, so good. Okay, so I kind of went a little rogue with my fabric and floss choices for this chart. I went with green. This was the color of my fabric. This was a one of a kind Leo and Roxy Flosco linen. It is, um, it's gone. There's no more of this particular color. Am I gonna be able to get it to show up? There we go, okay. Yeah, isn't it? It's awesome. So that was my linen and that's how much I got done. Right? Pretty good. So I, oh, again, it's another one of those, those charts. It's just like, I am so happy when I'm stitching this. So, so good. I love it. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's another 28 count fabric, one of a kind, and I'm using Pippi and South Beach. So Pippi is the darker brownish red color. There we go. And then South Beach is that lighter corally peach color for the pops of color there. And this is going to eventually be a cushion for my couch. And it is going to be spectacular on my couch. It's going to be it's going to be perfect. I can't wait. So, I really need to stop folding it in half right in the same place because I'm really making a nice line in the middle there. It's okay. It does iron out. I iron it out every time before I show you, so I do know that it will iron out. But I need to stitch faster. Stitch faster. Okay, so the very last thing that I'm going to share with you today is a new start. I had a new start. My son graduated from grade eight. I don't know how, I, do, I don't, he's, he, was a, he was a baby five minutes ago and now he's graduated from grade eight and he's going into high school. He's currently doing some summer school work this, this summer, um, getting ahead for, for high school. Um, they, I don't know if this is, uh, something that is offered in other places. I suspect it is, um, but it wasn't, I don't think it was when I was a kid, but you can take a course 
you can take a, a, a class in the summer that is ahead. So he's taking a grade nine geography class. So, and I think it, they're done in three and a half weeks and he'll be done his geography credit. So the purpose of it is, Sarah did the same thing when she was going through high school. They, she took a summer school credit three out of the four summers that she was in high school and she completed the credit in the summer before she went into the grade. So then by the end of high school, it sort of allowed her a chance to take a couple extra spare classes so that she had extra time to do homework for the really, really difficult. She, she took some really, really hard math classes. I, it's like circus tunes going off in my head. I, I have looked at some of her old math workbooks. And I just, uh. Anyway, my son seems to have inherited uh, the propensity to be good at math. So lucky for them, uh, lucky for them, they did not ever need their mother's help with math because I suspect John would have been able to help them, but I helped them with French, <laughs> French, history, music. I'm, I'm, I'm the parent for those, but math, forget about it. So anyways, um, why did I get into this again? I don't even remember why. Oh yeah. Graduation. He graduated grade eight. And I was feeling a little, uh, you know, he, my, my youngest child just finished grade eight. He's six foot two, you know, so I needed a new start. I just, because I wanted it, I just wanted a new start. I brought this chart into the shop specifically because I wanted to stitch it. It's called Witch Witch. It's by La Di Da. I think she published it in 2000. Yeah, it's gotta be because it's right on the chart, 2015. I am not a Halloween stitcher, but I adore this chart. I have loved this chart. I believe it was Jen Lee, Quirks and Stitches, who stitched this. And I think that's where I saw this chart for the very first time. And I've loved it ever since. It's monochromatic. I, you know, what's not to like? I love it. And it's got Quaker motifs in it. It's perfect. And we had this linen, it's one of a kind linen. And I thought, yeah, that's the perfect linen. So here's my start. Let me put, I'm gonna put the chart behind it so you can see my stitching. She has a shirt and some arms and she's about to put them on her hips. And that's how far I got. Cause I only, I only just started this. So you'll see more next time I share it. So it's just a teeny weeny little start. Can you see the buttonholes? There, look at that. That's so cute. So my linen is a uh, Leo and Roxy Flosco linen. And we ha it was a kind of a color study that Carrie had done. There were five yards that were varying shades of yellow. And I knew they'd be perfect for the chart. So I picked the one um, I picked the one that had a little dye bleed on it that I knew I wasn't going to sell anyways. And so that's, uh, it's on the other side and it's, it's not a small one, but that's, that's fine. Cause it's me who's stitching on it. It's not going to bother me. Um, and I'm using Vampish. The floss is called Vampish. It's a Leo and Roxy Floss Co. Floss. And it is a super dark, dark black purple. So you would think it was black unless you saw it next to black and then you would know that actually in fact it's purple. Come on camera. Camera's still focused on my face in the background here. Let's see. There. So it is just the most beautiful purple. Dark, dark, dark purple. Yeah, I love it. This is going to be a really fun stitch. Again, one of those ones where you just load up your needle and go. I just had to go and get the last thing I wanted to share with you today. My socks. So I have my socks in my, my coffee bag. This is the one I kept for myself. And these are the biscuit socks that I mentioned last week that I started quite a while ago. 
Um, they are a pattern by a woman named Lorraine and her YouTube channel is called LNS Crafts. I talked a little bit about Lorraine last, last week. I really enjoy her podcasts. And this is a sock pattern that she designed. It's called the Biscuit Sock. And there's a link in the drop down box below to the chart, to her pattern. It's a very simple vanilla sock with a slip stitch pattern to give it a little bit of interest. And the cuff is a little bit different as well. So I think the last, last week when I shared it, I was just past this little pearl bump line. And I have knit down, I've started the slip stitch pattern. You can see right there. See that? That's where the slip stitch pattern is. It's on both sides. So there's the matching side there. Isn't it pretty yarn? It's really, really pretty yarn. I, and it's showing up a little darker when it's so close, but if I hold it back here, you get a better idea of, of the, the color. It's really beautiful yarn. Um, this is a Canadian yarn dyer called Polka Dot Creek, and they're from Airdrie, Alberta in Canada. So Polka Dot Creek, and this was, so this is back before they had a brick and mortar shop. I think I bought it off their Etsy shop, um, you know, a number of years ago, and it was called Pistachio Nut Crunch. And it came with two 20 gram minis um, called Chocolate and Caramel. They're in the other room. I, I don't plan to use the minis in the sock. I want the sock to be entirely of this yarn. So there's the ball band there. You can see Polka Dot Creek. There's the Instagram. And uh, I believe their, their email should still, all of that should still be the same. So yeah, beautiful yarn. Really, really good quality, lovely to use, and it feels nice, it's got a nice hand feel. It is a slightly, now I don't know if, if their yarn base is still the same, because again, like I said, this is a few years old. It's a light fingering weight, uh, sock weight yarn. So it's, it's one of the thinner ones. You know how sock weights, some are a little bit, pl like for example, Croy, Patton's Croy, if you're used to knitting with Patton's Croy sock, that's quite a hefty sock yarn. This is more of a delicate sock yarn. It feels a fair bit thinner, but it's lovely. It's really, it feels really nice in your hands. And the sock that's knitting up feels really nice. What's the makeup of it? 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Yeah, it's really nice. I love it. I will, I will probably treat myself to another skein at some point. Okay, I think that's, I think that's it. I need to, um, I'm gonna go and record a couple other videos for the new channel now, which is, so fun. I mean, it, it's, yeah, five years, five years. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for still being here. If you're still here at the very end of this very, I know the videos lately have been long because I've been, I've been making, I've been, I've been stitching and I have lots to share and always lots to say. So yeah, thanks. Okay. So that's it for me for floss tube. I will be back next week. I'll be back next Tuesday. I hope that you're well. I hope that you're safe. And I hope that you have some crafting to bring you some joy as well. So take care, everybody. Have a great week and a great weekend. And I'll see you next week. Happy stitching, everybody.